Hello everybody and welcome to Mega Man Extreme 2 for Game Boy. Which will be run to you uh, will be so <laughs> which will be run by K Poisson and I LPs will be providing commentary so he can focus on that game. You will be playing the extreme difficulty, which isn't uh, necessarily the hardest difficulty in the game, but it is the uh, mode with the most content, as the X and Zero missions only feature half of the bosses and uh, lack the true final boss and final stage. And you will be doing the 100% item collection category, which is basically, um, if you've seen any Mega Man X ever, it's just heart, heart containers or life ups. Uh, Dr. Light's capsules, which are available to both X and Zero in this game, and um, sub tanks, of which there are two. Alright, so I guess I'll do the countdown. So, three, two, one, go. And we're off with the best part of any speedrun, unskippable cutscenes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, much like uh, like the Zero series, uh, these cutscenes are unskippable, but you can uh, speed the text up by holding down the A button. Um, and there are quite a few cutscenes, but not as much uh, compared to as stages um, on Extreme as on the other difficulties, as the other uh, categories have only eight stages but four unskippable cutscenes and this has five unskippable cutscenes but 13 stages 14 13 i don't know anyways uh this is the uh, much like the the older game boy games from um, capcom uh, this game mixes up elements from two different Mega Man games well actually this this is kind of a unique game Boy Mega Man in the sense that it mi mixes up a third so this is basically Mega Man X1, X2, and X3 bosses and stages in them. And this is the intro stage with a completely original boss, which we call Skull Tank. It's a fairly obvious name, but I don't think this boss has an official name. And the rapid fire function is allowed for, uh, for these speedruns, and because the buster doesn't trigger invincibility frames, um, you see it going down real fast. I think you can do it in three jumps, but I'm not, I'm not 100% like. I think four or five is, is pretty average. That was pretty pretty solid intro stage, and, um, and it, it actually mixes up some of the uh, the enemies from uh, like the the, the half uh, guard enemies are from Mega Man X6. And here we have some of the new characters, or one of the new characters which we won't be facing in the in the game. It's called Gareth, which is a knight-based reptoid. Um, and he's very annoying, has a, a very high RNG related um, boss battle, but because we're collecting the, uh, the special capsule in Barkana stage, which is the witch counterpart um, of Gareth, um, we luckily do not have to face off against Gareth, saving us a little bit of RNG. Now this run isn't super heavily RNG dependent, but there are um, like the random drops. Uh, there will be uh, a purchasing of items, like you can see here, and basically the, the small circle drops are DNA souls, which are used as currency, and you get 200 after every boss, and, um, and you need to, to buy uh, 300 worth of DNA souls. Uh, you have to spend those on items, so you have to get those back up, because we need 2,000 souls for the Saber Plus 2 for zero. Now, this game is very different from most Mega Man in the sense that we won't be following a traditional weakness order like uh, a lot of the classic and X series do, um, because the weakness weapons aren't that good against bosses, or at least not as good as the upgraded Sabers, and especially not as good as Zero's Final, which is a um, Giga type, Giga Attack type ability which you can uh, select from the menu, and uh, this does I think 12 damage. And you can use it twice if you have the, have the energy saver. But oh, and um, you can you can just land safely there. And um, yeah, this um, like K Poisson has been uh, running this game for quite a while, but I actually had the world record for this game for nine years. And uh, like he was he was starting to come up to me uh, in, in time, 
um, a couple of months ago. So I started working to get like sub 37. And then like maybe a month ago, he got under me and was was a really good run. I saw the saw the last part and he's, and, and just just now before for today, he actually got a two second PB. So here's the hoping we'll have some some good RNG for this game as well. So the reason you have to buy the Saber Plus One before this boss is, um, well, if you've seen this boss from X2, he's a hyper mode attack where he becomes invincible and casts lightning, which costs anywhere up to six to seven seconds. And if you, if you hit him seven times with this, uh, he'll go into that hyper mode. I think you want him to, to rope up, which he isn't doing. Come on, be nice. Ooh. So this, this is a, uh, yes, that, that's what you want to do so you can not get the lightning. Uh, so ideally you want him to throw this chain at you once and then go up to the ceiling um, for the fastest possible spread. And the reason this boss is done first is because of his ability, the lightning, which is done to, uh, which is required to unlock the capsule in uh, Tunnel Rhino stage, which gives you the zero final which slaughters basically every boss. So every boss becomes two zero finals and three saber plus one jump slashes. So that's a total of 12. I don't know. And these rocks are, are kind of kind of wonky. Like they take two jump slashes, but um, because of this game's stellar programming, sometimes the sword hits won't like connect as well as you think they have. So, um, like aside from the, the cutscenes and the programming though, this game is absolutely amazing. Especially when you compare it to its predecessor, Mega Man Extreme 1, um, which was uh, not, not a bad game, but I think this game um, does it better on nearly every level. Uh, it, it, it doubles the amount of content, um, extra playable character, um, better worked out weapons, even though you don't use them as much in this particular category, the weapons themselves are much more useful. And um, yeah, especially the music feels more, feels a little better too. So here we have uh, the Zero Final, which is absolute, absolutely the, the best addition to this game. It makes, uh, it makes routing um, very, very fun because you can choose the order in which you do the bosses at some point. So like after, Poisson will go for, um, false catfish after this because there's a difficult skip which if he messes it up he can potentially die at um, but I used to go for Hornet after this if I recall correctly you can basically fight Hornet whenever you'd like and, um, and there, so you can you can basically tweak the route a little bit which I think is, which I always like it it's, it's becomes kind of boring if there's only one true fastest route I, I personally like games that uh, allow for a little freedom in that, in that regard. Oh man! I'm sorry to interrupt. Do we have a moment for a donation? Oh, sure thing. Absolutely. Thank you. Because uh, seeing as how we're currently in another game with uh, people in mech suits exploring caves, uh, we just got a $325 donation by Natters with the comments for the kids, and that is bringing us up to the full incentive for the Super Metroid Gay Percent run so thank you so much i'm so excited to see what's next wow that's pretty gay i mean that's that's a lot of money nice so that was um tunnel rhino which is uh was the um the template for how most boss battles will be going from this point onward um and a neat little trick you can do because we're gonna get another beautifully well, I, I do. I must say, I do really like the graphics on these uh, cutscenes. But um, I completely lost my train of thought there. Okay, so next up is Cold Catfish. This is probably one of the most annoying stages. Uh, there's a vertical segment in here that's pretty pretty difficult to navigate there's actually a trick that you um, if you're stuck on a wall so if you're sliding down a wall and you get hit uh, you actually have armor so you don't get any knockback which can be used but you have to be very precise all in all i'd say this is one of the most technical stages in the game 
Oh, and look at that beautiful wall climb. If you um, hit the A button at a certain rhythm, and Poisson's really good at this. Like I, I can do it on a Super Nintendo controller on emulator pretty okay, but with the, with the Game Boy Advance, it's, it's just I don't know. But it's a specific rhythm, and if you hit it, you just skyrocket up that wall. And uh, it, it's definitely oh. So now we're getting the, uh, the foot parts for X, which will uh, give him the air dash like in X2 and the up air dash like in X3. which will be used to um, access some parts a little earlier or like take, take small shortcuts or just make one specific um, specific jump uh, a lot easier. Um, I used to do it without the up dash and um, yeah, if I missed it, it was you were going to lose like 20 or 30 seconds. So um, the choice to, to swap to X and use the up dash was a pretty good one. Even though I resisted this for a while, because like, no, no, you just gotta do it like this. But it's it's far more consistent, and there's really no real, there's no big time loss from not from not doing it. So this was the this was the place where he could have skipped or might still do it. I don't know. Yeah, and taking that bonk to create the uh, invincibility frame so he can. Uh, go through that current which would otherwise be instant death like he, he told me in uh, before this that he can actually do it without getting hit um, i can't i always take that that hit it makes me feel safe and look at that nice square in his face that is missing spectacular programming so another cool um, thing that we haven't figured out completely yet is that uh, upon defeating a boss something happens and um, you'll get a fast weapon text roll and basically that the weapon text will sp um, will speed up um, so be um, around three times as fast but uh, even though I have documentation with inputs and everything we still haven't figured out what the actual trigger is so it might be a frame perfect thing or like we really, really don't know. Another cool frame perfect thing in this game is that if you do a um, dash jump or a air dash jump and land, uh, if you press A on the very first frame that you land, um, you'll get a, a free dash jump, which would be especially nice in um, if you if you did a air dash above water air dash jump and then landed in the water and did a continuous dash jump because then you wouldn't get the, the underwater movement reductions. Uh, so those uh, twisters are actually instant death, and he'll be taking some uh, aggressive damage abuse strats, which I'm a big fan of. And I know there's a way to, to bypass this one as well, but I've only seen it in two assists, and it's very, it's very crazy. Or maybe it was with the, the extend barrier, so you'll have more iframes. And here we'll be collecting the head parts which we will need in on um, Flame Mammoth stage. Um, otherwise, you would have to beat Flame Mammoth and use his weapon in um, Neon Tiger stage, get the head parts for X there, and then revisit Flame Mammoth stage, which would take a lot of time. So that's, that's, that's something I really like uh, about this difficulty, is that um, routing isn't, isn't, especially for 100%, isn't like, it's, it's fun. There are some nice, relaxing auto-scroller moments here. This, this is probably my favorite theme. Um, like, from all the, the music that's been converted from the SNES, I'd say this is the one that converted over the best. So this is uh, one of the RNG bosses. It can go off screen and you'll lose a couple of seconds. Let's hope it doesn't do that. A okay, nice turkey. Boom. Very nice. Only the, um, the ostrich and wire sponge fights are the uh, most heavy RNG dependent moments uh, of the boss battles and there's one mid boss 
in uh, Hornet stage, which uh, oh man, it's 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 basically the worst um, RNG monster in the game. If it gives you the perfect pattern, you can basically save eight seconds. But uh, it's very rare. Here, Poisson is killing some extra enemies for those DNA souls. Which is also a very um, frustrating part. Like, I had a, I had a run that was on, on PV pace, and uh, I ended up being just four DNA souls short. So yeah, that's... that's like, all in all, still, still, even with all the, the RNG hijinks and the uh, unskippable cutscenes, this is an amazingly fun game to play. Uh, has, has great replay value, and it's just nice to, to fire up, you know, because it's basically 40 minutes, so it's not um, not a very long game, so you can just fire it up when you're in the car, and like, um, I don't know, whenever, <laughs> in, your, in your lunch break or whatever. So these fireballs are also instant death on extreme. And this is, uh, oh, nice, he got out fairly clean. Like, you can get stuck under that platform really easy, and it's, uh, I guess it's, yeah, it's just one of those things that isn't, isn't programmed that well. And if you listen closely to the music, you'll notice that something is off. Well, it is if you've played Mega Man X1. So for the Japanese version of this game, the stage music for Launch Octopus and Flame Mammoth is swapped around. This was fixed in the American version, but... Um... So here he's gonna switch to X, because he'll need the uh, weapon from Flame Mammoth to get to, get to the capsule in Neon Tiger State. I really like this weapon get screen. It has an animated background and it also has the, the like the grid lines. It's very similar to Mega Man 4 on the NES. All in all for the for the Game Boy Color, I'd say I'd say this is a very beautiful game. This game gets more use out of the right armors than any other X game, I think. Ooh, and a little too low. You can actually glide through there, but it's gotta gotta wait a little. So this is uh, here's a point coming up where I used to die a lot, and it's it's like Poisson came up with this really really nice solution. But I used to like air dash into the flamethrower and then uh, yeah, rip. All in all, I say this game is very easy to pick up, like because of the uh, simplified boss battles through Zero's final. Um, it's very um, like, it's, yeah, it's a very easy game to, to learn. Like there are some very specific and some very difficult strats, but that's it's, it's like that with every game. Um, but most most of the general strats aren't uh, too hard, and aside from like maybe five or six points that have a uh, high mortality rate, it's it's. it's Pretty straightforward. Using some aggressive damage abuse here. And again switching to X to get the weapon from Neon Tiger. Which will allow him to use to cripple a certain boss which will be coming up shortly. So 
because this is one of the stages where um, my route or my idea used to differ greatly from what Poisson does. And um, I, I used to think like there's going to be like a, a divergence in the routes. Like uh, there's going to be, uh, you can go over the top or underneath. Um, and I used to think that um, going over the top was faster, even though it had a small mid boss, but you can basically one shot it. Um, but he, I actually retimed it and it turned out that Poisson was right and the lower route is faster. And also something we do differently, I switched to zero here, like after or before getting the hard capsule. And I drill crush this thing twice, which is slightly faster on this, this boss, mid boss. Um, but Poisson doesn't. And I also use this drill crush on this mid boss, which is slightly faster, I believe, but I'm not 100% not on it. But it is like more prone to, to messing it up. Plus you have to switch an additional time uh, to you to get X to, to the capsule. So all in all, it might even out. This will complete X's armor, I think. And, um, and uh, when it comes to the amount of parts that you can buy with the DNA souls, we're like, well, what you can equip is that X can, uh, without armor, can equip four. So that is to say, like, the moment you complete the uh, armor for X, you can only equip two. But if you have three armor parts, and you can still equip four um, DNA soul parts. And Zero can equip three parts at all times, because he's, his armor doesn't involve a change. This is also a very cool strat from Poisson. I also use the Drill Crush here, but um, this looks to be far more consistent, so I'm definitely gonna, gonna use this strat myself in the near future. Maybe give him some uh, competition while we uh, try to get this down to under 36 mid. Poor launch octopus. He becomes a boss even easier than Toadman. Like it's it's, it's kind of hard to even call that a boss battle, is it? Like wow. Seems like octopus did not have much of a chance here. No, he did not. Okay, and now we're on to the final Maverick stage of Blast Hornet, which is my favorite boss. He's, he doesn't look as cool as he does in Mega Man X3 on the SNES, but still. Okay, so I'm wondering what he'll, what Poisson will do here. Like, I used to kill these bees. Oh, he doesn't kill those bees. He doesn't kill any of the bees. Okay, maybe some of the bees. But um, I used to kill those bees because they have a fairly high drop rate for DNA souls. Which, oh, that's a nice damage boost to, to obtain them. This is also a very um, unique stage in the sense that um, this this doesn't even remotely resemble his stage from Mega Man X3. Like it's, it's a lot of the stages are, are vaguely similar to the SNES versions, but this one really isn't. And, and there was the um, the shortcut that I mentioned earlier. Like I used to do use a dash jump to go around that corner, but if you fall down, it's it's a major time loss. But um, the only possible improvement that could be done is that he switches to X earlier, so he, there's another spot where you can use an up dash. But it's not it's not it save that much. Maybe saves one and a half seconds. And this will complete the armor set for Zero, giving him the body parts which will, much like the um, X game, just give you a damage reduction. Like, I don't think I've explained all the parts, but basically the, the legs and the heads parts, they, they, they crush blocks. Oh, here, this is the RNG mid boss, by the way. Oh, oh, that was a very, very, very nice start. Oh. Like, this, this had the potential for the best possible pattern. Like, I think it was. But he was just to the top one a little too late, and after that, the pattern went to, to hell. What was I saying? Oh yeah, parts. So the arm parts provide uh, the, the cross-charge shot from Mega Man X3. So uh, X can charge up his buster to even higher levels, but you won't be seeing any of that 
because rapid fire doesn't allow for the charging of the buster and auto charge isn't nearly as useful. Yeah. Yeah, the boss battles of this game aren't really where it's at. It's, it's the truly the stages that uh, that make this game a lot of fun to play. Like the bosses are basically snacks. I don't think there there have been this like bosses this easy since like Mega Man Classic on the NES. And now after defeating the eight Mavericks, Gareth appears and tells you something about a robot lavatory where this is all taking place. Which surprisingly looks exactly like Sigma's second stage from Mega Man X1. So there's a um, way to clip to this second platform, but it's very risky, so I'm not surprised that Poisson doesn't go for it. Like, uh, I've still been trying to find a way to make it workable, but it doesn't... <laughs> not anytime soon. I feel like there's still a lot of strats that need to be uh, discovered, but... Uh, there are very few runners uh, playing this game actively. I think we have four uh, people playing this game and only uh, Poisson and I are playing the Extreme 100% category. And uh, Poisson has the world record for every category in this game, um, but is facing very uh, is facing competition from Faison Knights, which is only who is only five seconds away from beating him in X any percent, if I recall correctly. This next boss is Velgarder, Sigma's lapdog. Which isn't nearly as irritating as he is on Super Nintendo, or as difficult. But he does give Poisson the bad pattern. Or at least the not so good pattern. Costing a few seconds. Alright, he has more than 1800 souls. This means he could be able to buy the Saber Plus 2 and the other parts after he defeats the, the boss of this stage, which is really nice. Like, ideally, you would want to, to be able to buy the parts after Valgarder, but then you'd have to get pretty, pretty amazing drops. Like, it used to happen to me like one every 10 runs. Some slow scrolling screen here and lots of death traps. So mm, this next platform coming up can actually, if you land on top of it and you jump straight away, there's a chance, um, like um, there's a magic pixel or something like that that you uh, get stuck in a jump animation. And when you're jumping, pressing A causes you to air dash. And what's right next to you? Electric death. So, um, yeah, like I, uh, me and Poisson, Poisson were talking about earlier, like we've lost quite a few runs to that happening. So we usually like Poisson took it really well, like he, he did it really fast, but I usually take that extra, extra half of a second to make sure that Mega Man isn't jumping. So um, like my run doesn't have to die. Another cool thing about this game is that um, it has checkpoints, which uh, I've lost over entirely. Um, and we won't be able to see anymore after this point. So, ooh, that was not the right hit for, um, on this boss. But it doesn't matter too much, I think. No, it just needs one more hit. Okay, cool. So ideally you can finish him in three hits. So 1-0 final, then a drill crush that hits both the heads, and then um, the uh, another 0 final. But because his first 0 final was a little too high, he only uh, connected, it, don't, it only connected with the top head. Um, but basically, the, there are um, some like gray metal platforms that divide each segment, and um, like they're in, in all the stages or in all the the, the eight Maverick stages, and they um, wait. They, yeah, yeah. And um, if you turn the game off, they, it will act as a temporary save, which I think is kind of the game's way of dealing, like with the limited battery life that um, used to, the Game Boys used to have. Or that if you have to turn it off all of a sudden because I don't know obligations or something that you can still continue roughly where you were at. 
which I think is a really nice feature. So here is the diverging of, uh, of the paths. If you played as zero, you have to go to Gareth. Um, but because, like I mentioned earlier, the Hadoken Shoryuken capsule, the special capsule, um, like we need to get that for 100%. And that is thankfully that is in Berkana stage. So that at least saves us some of the RNG nonsense. Look at that beautiful pixel art. Like that, that, that would have been even like that. That's almost SNES acceptable, or at least I think so. Um, and this background is actually from Mega Man X4. Now that I look closely, I think this is based on the final weapon from Mega Man X4. This is also a like you have to plan this out pretty well, otherwise you'll come up short and die. Oh, this is the, the auto save pad I was talking about. So really nice mashing up of uh, stage ideas, enemies from uh, already existing uh, Mega Man games. And the cool thing, if you dash fast enough, Dr. Light's face will disappear from the left hand corner, which can also, I think, I think you can also do it in the body capsule and launch up to the stage. Just a lot of minor minor, I don't know, gimmicks that I really like about this game. And here's Satan background. Also, that is also from Mega Man X4 where you used to face Sigma. Having equipped the Buster Plus One and Plus Two will do amazing amount of damage. Well, still more than a. Uh, and that's that's the weird thing. Like on bosses, a charge shot will not do more. Oh, oh, this is bad. A, a charge shot will not do more damage than a regular Buster shot. So everything does two damage if you have no parts equipped. Really funky. So the the whenever Barakana hits you with one of her orbs, like she has A orbs and B orbs, and whatever she hits you with. That button you can't use anymore for the for a small period of time. Costing this this cost maybe maybe seven to ten seconds I think. And now more dialogue. Me like like how many? Is this a good time for donations? Oh yeah, sure. Wonderful. Uh, we have a $20 donation from Eli33 saying, I just found out about this and I'm excited that I get a chance to donate live. Good luck to all the runners and have fun, everyone. And we also have a 19 and 58, $19.58 donation from Kai. As is traditional with every Mega Man game, comes the boss rush. But now, because we have the extra parts, especially the Saber Plus 2, it will be um, like a lot less menuing. Because I think two jump slashes from Zero Saber equal one Zero Final. So Zero Final is more reserved for occasions where the boss might do some RNG nonsense or go off screen or try... Like I've seen Poisson use it to, to prevent the lightning from the second round of... Um, the second sponge fight. Definitely a good idea to use that something there. So as with most um, boss refight chambers, there are some uh, some health drops here. Look at that damage. I think every boss is around six to seven hits now. I think it's six hits. So the only potential problem could be Ostrich. I think, yeah, Ostrich might be the only time loss.
I really hope some people of, that are watching like the way this game looks and plays. Because, like I said, there are only four people playing this game right now. Ooh, and he does the off-screen thing. Um, and it would be really nice to have more runners for this game, especially because I feel like there's a lot of strats or a lot of uh, information that we haven't collected from this game. Um, especially if, if somebody's a two-assisted runner or, or something like that, that would be great. Because uh, this game would really, really use more people uh, playing it. Right, two left. And this is why he conserved the Oh! Oh this 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 has never happened before. We've never seen this before. So Zero's final isn't completely foolproof, and in this occasion it uh, decided to attack the front Oh! Oh my god, this is this is this is sheer hell. Like this is this is the this is literally the worst. Like double double madness. Wow. And due to the Ray Claws 2 damage to Octopus, the map works out even better because zero, uh, zero Jump Slash leaves the last hit with 2 damage, so it works out really nice. Okay, now don't take too much damage here, even though now nah, he has good health, so it's just the final boss. And surprise, surprise, it's Sigma. Like, who, who could have ever seen that coming? Wait, the boss in this game is Sigma? <gasps> I know, right? And he has Wolverine Claws in this game. So, um, the jump dash slash does one fourth of his health in both forms. But the second form can get kind of RNG. And uh, look, he has like this big doggy mech. Mech, mecha, doggy mecha. And it, uh, you have to hit it four times with a charge buster shot uh, just above your jump height, which is why the air dash boots are absolutely necessary. And another weird thing is that, um, like, he can change colors to become weak to zero saber if he's red, and he can buster again if blue. But sometimes he will change colors, but not actually change colors. So you'll have to hit him with saber, but there will be no indication. And that, uh, yeah, that, that can make this like, I think, I think it just happened. Oh no, okay. So this is this is fairly good pattern. Like Croissant has been getting some amazing, amazing final boss RNG. I wish I had this RNG on my Sigmas. Like I, I always get the worst. And GG time. That's it. All right, that <laughs> that wire gave me a hell of a time. <laughs> I actually did not know zero final couldn't go through wires sponges wire that's the first time that's actually ever happened to me yeah i had never seen that before too like i've seen some some nasty stuff from from zero final but never this so this was and, and then he did the, the thunder attack in second time like to to add to the extra uh... <laughs> all right well that's extreme 100 percent uh if you guys want to try running this game, I would highly recommend it. It's a very easy game to get into. And we're all friendly. All right? All right, that's it for me. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. And see you next time. And thank you so much for that amazing run. Up next, we have Mega Man powered up on the PSP. Uh, in any percent Proto Man run with uh, brought to you by Zero Blade Edge. So stay tuned for that.